Hello, today we are doing mission four. We are applying geometric formulas and actually going to be working backwards to find out either the base or the height or the radius or, for example, of something like that, of a circle. So quick review of our formulas. A parallelogram, we have our area, it's really the same as a rectangle, it's just base times height. Remember our base is here and our height is straight up and down at a 90 degree angle. These sides are not your height. Those would be part of the sides that you use to find the perimeter. Uh, rectangle is the same base multiplied by your height. For a triangle, same, same, base times height, but we are only looking at half of a rectangle. Like this would make up the entire rectangle, and we want only half of it, so base times height divided by 2. That will give us the area of a rectangle, and remember, or sorry, a triangle. Remember, our height is also a right angle, straight up and down. The perimeter of all of those shapes is simply adding up all the sides. And the last two are for a circle. So the formula for the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Area is always two dimensional we have to the power of 2. And remember our radius is from the center of the circle to the edge. Our circumference, we have two formulas that we could use. We have 2 pi r, 2 times pi times the radius, so two radiuses, which really make up from one side to the other our diameter. So our circumference could also be uh, diameter times pi or pi times the diameter, pi d. So the diameter, remember, is the same as 2 times the radius. So those are really the same equation. You can use either one. So let's take a look at a couple equations. It says pick your formula, substitute or plug in what you know, and then solve for what we're missing, the unknown. And it also says here, draw a picture. That'll help us. So these ones actually do have pictures. Some of the ones in the back will not have a picture drawn. So it says find the length of the base. So first, I know that this is a parallelogram. So the area of a parallelogram, the formula, I know I'm going to use the area formula because they say A equals 96. Area is simply base times height. So we're going to plug in what we know. We know the area is 96, so I'm going to plug that in there. The base, we don't know. We're going to use the letter B. And our height right here is 8. So I just plugged in those numbers that I know, and now I simply need to solve this. So this goes back to order of operations. We are undoing our order of operations. First we get rid of adding and subtracting, second we get rid of multiplying and dividing. And these are opposites, the opposite of adding is subtracting, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. Okay. So here we have multiplication, so the opposite of multiplying is division. So if I divide by 8 on one side, I have to do the other side, same thing. Remember, like lifting weights, if I lose 8 pounds on this side, I have to lose 8 pounds on this side, or gain, or whatever. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. 8 divided by 8 is just 1, so we have b times 1, or just b. And then we have 96 divided by 8 on the other side. 96 divided by 8 in my calculator gives me 12. So the base of our triangle right here is 12. And you can check to see if that works. Does 12 times 8 give you 96? Yes, it does. Next, we have a triangle. So the area of the triangle is 12 feet squared. What is the length of the base? So again, area is base times height divided by 2 for a triangle. Our area, they told us, is 12. So we're going to put a 12 there for the area. Our base, we do not know. Uh, but we're multiplying by the height, which is 4. And for a triangle, we need to divide by 2. So if we go to solve this, I don't like that divide by 2 sitting there. So think in your order of operations, what is the opposite of dividing by 2? The opposite of dividing is multiplying. So if we multiply by 2 here, multiply by 2 there, 2 divided by 2, top and bottom, these are inverses or opposites of each other, they cancel out. 
So we have b times 4 on one side, and 12 times 2 is 24 on the other side. The reason this 2 here canceled out because this is really multiplied by 2, top and bottom. 2 divided by 2 is just 1, so they eliminate. And then last, the opposite of multiplying right here is divide. So we need to divide by 4 on both sides. Same thing, 4 on the top and the bottom. 4 divided by 4 is just 1. 1b or just b. And 24 divided by 4 is 6. So the base of our triangle is 6. On to the back side, we need to draw a picture. It says the equilateral triangle has a perimeter of 45 inches. So I'm going to draw a triangle. The perimeter is 45 inches. We want to know what is the length of one side. So perimeter, formula for perimeter, is to add up all sides. Oops. Add all sides. So if this is an equilateral triangle, that, that tells us that each of these side lengths is equal or the same. So I don't know what they are, but I'm just going to say x. This side is the same as this side is the same as this side. So our perimeter is going to be x plus x plus x. And we know that the perimeter adds up to 45. So if we simplify this, this is really 1x plus 1x plus 1x. So how many x's do we have? Well, we have three. We have three sides, right? So 45, the total for all of them is 3x. So this is the same as just solving what we did before. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. Look at your order of operations, PEMDAS. These two go together. The opposite of multiply is divide. So I'm going to divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 is just 1x, or just x. And 45 divided by 3, you can plug in your calculator. You should get 15. So each side length here is 15. 15 plus 15 plus 15 does give us 45. Next one is very similar. It's just a square. A square yard has a fence that is 44 feet around the outside. So around the outside, again, we're looking at perimeter. So perimeter is adding up all sides. So I'm just going to draw a square. And same thing, we need to know what is the length of one side, and since it's a square, we know they're all the same. So our perimeter equals 44. So we have four x's, x plus x plus x plus x will give us a total of 44. So we know, just like the last one, this is really 1x plus 1x plus 1x. That's really four x's all together if we combine our like terms. And we just need to solve this now. The opposite of multiplying by 4 is dividing by 4. 4 divided by 4 is just 1. And 44 divided by 4 will give us 11. And we're talking about yards. Oh, not yards. Feet. Sorry. 11 feet. So each side is 11 feet, 11, 11, 11, 11, which makes sense because 11 plus 11 plus 11 plus 11 does give us 44. Now this last page is a little bit tricky, so make sure you pay attention. There will be one like this on your test. So we're looking at circumference and area. These ones are circumference. Oh, one of them was supposed to be area. I think I made a mistake. Oh, well, we'll do circumference here. Pick your formula, substitute in what you know, and solve for the unknown. So, we have circumference, which is, we're going to look at radius first here. 2 times pi times r. If you want to use the other formula, pi times diameter, you can. I'm just going to use this one, because I like to use that one, I don't know. Our circumference is 400 yards. I'm just going to fill in everything else that we know. 2 times pi times r. We're trying to find our radius. If we can fi find out our radius, we can also find out our diameter. 
all the way across, okay? So first, it's all multiplying, so it doesn't matter what we get rid of. So I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying by 2, which is dividing by 2. And we get 200 over here. 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So all we have left is pi times r. So then our last step, the opposite of multiplying by pi, is dividing by pi. And if you don't have a pi button, you can use 3.14. But it doesn't matter what's on the top and the bottom. If it's the same, they eliminate. 3.14 divided by 3.14 is just 1. 1r one or just r. So we have 200 divided by pi gives us 63.66 for our radius. 63.66. And our diameter is 2 of our radiuses. Remember, our diameter goes all the way across. So we can just multiply that by 2 to get 127. Oops, what am I doing? 127. Come on now. 0.32. If you use the other equation right up here and from the diameter, then you can just divide by 2 to find the radius. So last one that we're going to do, we are actually going to, instead of finding the circumference, we're going to find the area. So I'm going to change this question really quick. I'm going to change it to area equals 14 meters squared or centimeters squared. We'll leave it as centimeters. So we're looking this now for the area. <coughs> I meant <coughs> excuse me, I meant for this question to be area and somehow it ended up as circumference. So the area of a circle is pi times your radius squared. So let's plug in what we know. Our area is 14 centimeters times pi times our radius squared and we don't know what our radius is. So it does say here, to undo the square, use the square root, but we're not there yet. We need to get rid of this pi first. The opposite of multiplying by pi, just like we did over here, was dividing by pi. If I divide by pi, pi over pi, 3.14 divided by 3.14 is just 1. If you plug it in your calculator, if, you're not, if you don't believe me, type in the button pi, divided by the button pi, and you should get 1. 1 r squared or just r squared. <clears throat> and then on the other side, we have 14 divided by pi. And we get 4.45, or 4.6 if we round it. And then our last step, you guys, it says to undo the square, the little 2, use the square root. So the opposite, just like the opposite of multiplying is dividing, the opposite of adding is subtracting, the opposite of a square is the square root symbol. We've used it a long time ago. A square root and a square are actually opposites of each other. They eliminate. If you don't believe me, you can type into your calculator second square root of uh, any number. Let's pick 10. And then put, a, put it to the power of 2, and you would still get that same number. Okay? So they do eliminate. And on the other side, we just need to take the square root of 4.46. Remember, to get the square root button, you need to push the second button first, then the x squared button because the square root is above it. So the square root of, come on now, square root of 4.46 is 2.11. That is our radius. To get our diameter we can just multiply it by 2. <clears throat> 2.11 times 2 gives me 4.22. we found our radius and our diameter when we're given the area of a circle. I know these ones were a little bit challenging. The front side should be a little bit easier than the back side when we get to 